Hello, I am Mayank Bakshi and today I'm going to talk about um, recent joint work with my collaborators. Chai Sheng is a graduate student at the Chinese University of Hong Kong and Sadar Chekni and Mingua Chen are professors here. In this work, we look at the problem of network tomography through compressive sensing. And specifically, uh, the problem is the following. We are given a network of point-to-point -point links and we want to figure out, uh, given this network, we want to figure out where the congested links or nodes in this network are and what the d value of delays for these congested uh, nodes or links are. And to figure these things out, we are allowed to make end-to-end -end measurements. That is, we are allowed to send test packets from one probe node to another and we can perform this operation uh, many times using many probe nodes and based on the collection of total time required for these test packets, we want to figure out the delay characteristics for the entire network as quickly as possible. So here are our results. We come up with an algorithm that we call the frantic algorithm. This algorithm has the following properties. The number of measurements required for, al for uh, this algorithm is order k log e over log n. Here k is the total number of congested uh, links in the network and E is the number of edges in the network and M is a parameter that we call loopiness uh, which denotes the total number of times any packet can travel on any given link in the network. Further, the complexity of our algorithm is also order k log e or log m. In comparison with previous works, we note that this is much better specifically uh, if you look at Zhu et al's work, then uh, their, uh, in their work, the number of measurements required has a factor of Tn, which is the mixing time of the network. And uh, their complexity of their decoding is the complexity of solving a linear program, which typically scales uh, polynomially with the size of the network. All right, so now let's look at some key ideas in our algorithm. First, we know that the problem of network tomography is, in, is very similar to the problem of compressive sensing. Um, let's see how. So let's consider uh, this network and let's send two test packets, one over the green path and the second over the blue path. And let y1 and y2 be the time taken for uh, both, the te both these test packets. And let, let's call d1 to d9 the individual delay values for edges E1 through E9. So it's easy to see that Y1 to uh, Y1 and Y2 are related to D1 through D9 through a matrix multiplication operation like this. And uh, specifically for each of these uh, each of these parts, the weight of any edge is equal to the number of times any packet travels on that edge. If you are familiar with compressive sensing, this uh, seems very similar to compressive sensing. Uh, in compressive sensing, we have an unknown vector on the right, uh, which is k sparse, and it's it's multiplied by the measurement matrix to get measurement outputs. And based on the collection of measurement outputs, we want to re reconstruct the unknown vector. And it's known that uh, by using the sparsity, we can uh, we can uh, use very few, we, we are required to use very few number of measurements to decode uh, the unknown vector. Alright, so now it's tempting to think that we can, um, given this connection, we can start with any compressive sensing matrix and use it to perform network tomography. However, note that there are a couple of key differences. Firstly, in compressive sensing, um, people people usually look at either uh, measurement matrices which are either real valued, that is all the entries are allowed to take real values, or they look at very restricted settings where the entries are allowed to take uh, binary or binary values like 0, 1. Not much is known about uh, good matrices which look at which take integer values. However, in our case, we are constrained uh, to look only at matrices which take integer weights. That is, um, if you look at any test packet, then the weight of any edge is is equal to the number of times 
the text packet travels on that edge which is an, in, an integer right so this is one this is the first key difference the second key difference between compressive sensing and R setting is that um, in compressive sensing often the location of non-zero values is chosen arbitrarily as well as the value of these non-zero entries is also chosen arbitrarily however in our, our setting the location of non-zero values is constrained by the, net, net, the network topology and further the exact value of these non-zero entries is also constrained by the constraints on uh, the kind of paths that can exist in the network for instance uh, there can be no uh, path which goes only through the edge E5 and E7 it, as all paths have to be connected so therefore it's not possible to get a measurement output which assigns a non-zero weight only to the edges E5 and E7 and zero weights to all other edges all right so so these are the two main differences between compressive sensing and R setting so let's look at um, tackling the first difference so in, in our recent work in compressive sensing, we looked at, uh, we came up with a class of matrices called the Shofar matrices, where uh, based on complex valued or real valued matrices, we can decode, uh, we can, we can uh, reconstruct the unknown vector X uh, very quickly. So based on, uh, like, uh, based on some ideas from the Shofar matrix, we can come up with uh, an, an integer version of compressive sensing which we call Shofa int which has the following properties first of all the measurement matrix A is integer valued and all the entries takes, uh, take values between 0 and M and if we are given a k sparse vector D then we can recover uh, the k sparse vector by performing uh, a a matrix multiplication with A and getting a measurement output Y as long as the number of measurements is order K log N over log M so, so that is it's linear with K and grows as uh, grows with N as log N and further uh, the decoding complexity of Shofa int is also order K log N over log M alright so now let's look at how we apply Shofa int to our network tomography problem. All right, so so now we are going to assume that we have an in, an integer valued measurement matrix using um, using this design. So um, so now if we start with any arbitrary uh, compressive sensing matrix which is an integer valued, then it can assign a non. It's possible that it that it assigns a non-zero values. Uh, for any measurement course, um, corresponding to a path which is disconnected for example it, it's possible that the the matrix desires that the, the measurement output is non-zero has non-zero weight only corresponding to the edges e1 and e3 However, note that there is no connected path that goes only through E1 and E3. It has to also include other edges. So to overcome this, we come up with the idea of cancellation, which works as follows. First, we send a test packet over this path, that is E1, uh, E6, E5, and E3. Next, we send a test packet only over E5 and another one only over E6. Now, based on these three um, uh, th these three measurement outputs we can we can simulate the measurement output corresponding to uh, sending packets only over the edge e1 and e3 by subtract subtracting out the contribution due to the last uh, two, last two measurements from the first measurement so this way we can we can uh, ensure that uh, we can this way we can ensure that any location of non-zero uh, non uh, entries in the measurement matrix can be tackled. However, note here that the, the values or the weights of the non-zero entries is also determined by the path that's chosen. So uh, it, you can also see that that's also constrained by the network topology. So to overcome that, we 
also introduced the idea of loopy measurements, which works as follows. So suppose we want to uh, assign a path, uh, assign a weight, which which is equal to let's say two over this this edge and one over this edge. So to do to this, we can we can uh, perform the following trick. We can send a test packet over this edge e1 five times by sending it uh, thrice in this direction and twice in this direction and then it travels over the edge e5 and then this travels over the edge e3 thrice and then finally it goes over the edge e5 and the second test packet can be sent over the edge e1 e6 e3 then e5 Finally, we can subtract out the, the total end-to-end -end time taken by these two test packets to get the time taken um, when the test packet travels only twice over the edge E1 and once over the edge E3. So by combining these two ideas of cancellation and loopy measurements, we can simulate any arbitrary integer-valued compressive sensing matrix over the network uh, by adding uh, a constant number by, by uh, by, by just adding a constant number of measurements for each end-to-end -end measurement and um, together with uh, these three ideas we can show that uh, we can uh, achieve the desired number of measurements and the desired co measurement complexity. Finally, I'd also like to touch upon some extensions that we have looked at. Um, so here in the, in, our, in the approach that we have described so far, uh, we have not looked at the specific structure of the network. It turns out that if you look at the actual structure of the network based on Steiner trees or network decomposition, you can also do much better. Uh, the details of these are listed on our uh, uh, on our on the website, and it has been submitted to ITW and can be accessed over on this website. Thank you.